Hello lovely family, you are welcome to today's video. Today, Pastor Mensa Otabel talks about the three stages and seasons of life. Please do well to watch this video to the end in order to understand the full message. And also while watching, please click on the like button. Thank you. Now, where you are can be determined in many ways. And today I'm going to give us two ways to determine where we are. I'm going to give you first the stages of life, and then I'm going to talk about the seasons of life. The stages of life and the seasons of life. If you want to determine where you are, you have to determine from the stages of life and the st seasons of life. How do we determine the stages of life? First John chapter seven, chapter two. First John chapter two, verse 12 to 14. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you. For his name's sake, I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you know the father. I have written to you, fathers, because you know him from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you've overcome the wicked one. Now, in this passage, there are three clear stages that are described childhood adulthood eldership childhood adulthood eldership now childhood in this passage is not just talking about biological children but it's talking about spiritual and mental children and spiritual and mental adults and spiritual and mental elders now, how do we determine childhood? Childhood is a stage of learning. It's a stage of learning. You can determine whether you are at that stage or not by looking at your language. If your language in life is always, I need someone to help me. I need someone to encourage me. I need someone to lift me up. You are at the childhood stage of life. Everybody whose language is, I need someone to help me. I need somebody to teach me. I need somebody to encourage me. Somebody has to help me to become who I have to become. You are at the childhood stage of life. Now, you may in age be old, but in attitude be a child. And there are people who never outgrow childhood in their lives. Forever, they are looking for somebody to fix their problems for them. When they make a mistake, they go to somebody to fix their problem for them. When they have a financial problem, they go to somebody to fix their problem for them. They're always looking for somebody to fix their problem. If that is how your life plays out, you are at the stage of life called childhood. And it's not an insult, you just have to know where you are so you can decide to grow. Because until you know where you are, you'll never know where you're supposed to go. So childhood is the first stage. Second stage is adulthood. Adulthood is the stage of living. It's a time in your life when you say, I need to do exploits with my life. I need to show that I can overcome obstacles. I need to solve my problems. I need to live my life successfully. If that is your language, you are at the young age, adulthood of your life. You are an adult in life. You're not looking for somebody to help you. You are now looking to solve problems. You are now looking for challenges. You are now looking for opportunity to maximize your life. The third stage of life is eldership. When you become an elder, when you become an elder, the most important thing to you is legacy. Legacy, what you leave behind. Your language is, I need to empower other people to become great. I need to help somebody to discover their potential. I need to help somebody to become greater than I am. I need to make sure that the people coming after me have a better opportunity than I have. If that's your language, you are at the adulthood of life. So let's look at the three stages again. Childhood, 
learning. I need someone to help me. Adulthood, living. I need to do exploits. Elderhood or eldership, legacy. I need to empower other people. Now, if you use this simple instrument, you can always tell where you are in life. So if I ask you where are you in life, you have to now figure out, I'm an adult, I'm a child, I'm an elder. Don't feel shy about it. If you're a child, you're a child. But the good news is children grow. And so you can grow, you can change, you can become better. Every blessing that God has for you is determined by the stage of life you are in. When Bishop Bismarck was preaching and talking about getting to the house top, he's talking about the same thing. You have to graduate from childhood to adulthood to be able to reach out to the things that God has for you. Otherwise, there can be great promise for your life, but your attitude will always be on the ground. Always begging, always seeking for somebody to lift you up. So the first way to find out where you are is through the stages of life. Everybody say the stages of life. All right. The second way of finding out where you are, and I'm going to spend a lot of time talking about it, is the seasons of life. The seasons of life. Genesis chapter 8, verse 21 to 22. After Noah had come out of the flood with his children and, and so on, they made a sacrifice. The Bible says, and the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. Whilst the earth remains, there will be seasons. Now these are seasons of the weather. But they are also the seasons of life because what is true naturally is also true spiritually. First the natural, then the spiritual. So there are seasons here. Now for those of us in, in this part of the world, in West Africa, uh, we, our season is just two. Raining, no rain. It's either rainy season or no rain season. But... The Bible, fortunately, was not written in Nigeria or Ghana. So the, the people that God used to teach us, we have to understand it within the context and the culture within it is written for us to understand it now within our world. Now, there are th six main seasons that are set out in this passage. The first is seed time. Everybody say seed time. Now, seed time is a time when you are sowing seeds or you're making sacrifice or you're making investment. Seed time is a time when you are doing the things that will bring you the results you want. So, at every seed time, you are doing something that is going to give you something you are looking forward to. You want to have a university degree, your seed time, you go to school and learn and take your exams. That's your seed time because your harvest is a university degree. You want to make money, there is a seed time. You have to start investing. You have to start working hard. You have to start making your deadlines and keeping your shadows. Your harvest, you're going to make money. So seed time is always the time when you are making sacrifice and investing and doing the things that will give you the results you want. It's a time for digging, seed time. Then there is harvest, harvest. Harvest is a time for reward, is a time for reaping what you have sown. It's a time that calls for strategy. It's a time that calls for reinvestment because harvest time 
is a more difficult season than seed time. One person can plant a field, but it takes a group of people to harvest the field. When you get into the harvest time of your life, you have to learn how to work with people. When you are in the seed time of your life, you can do it alone. When you get to the harvest, you have to learn to work with people. So if, God, if, you, if you're successful in your seed time alone, but never know how to work with people in your harvest time, your harvest will be aborted. Your harvest will be destroyed. So there is seed time, there is harvest. All right. Then there is cold or winter. Cold or winter. It's a season of loneliness and dryness. A season of loneliness and dryness. It's a time when everything is lonely. It's a time of rejection. It's a time of betrayal. It's a time of abandonment. When you get into the cold season of your life, you feel like nothing is working for you, although things are working. But it looks like nothing is working. Everything looks dead. Everything looks hostile. People don't seem to be engaged with you or happy with you. It's the cold season of your life. Then there is the heat season or the summer season of your life. It's a time of warmth and of joy. This is the time when you are embraced, when everything is bright, when things begin to, when you begin to feel good about yourself. It's a time when you are joyful and happy. In the cold season, you are always sad. It's a depressing time. One of the things you learn in the cold season is how to manage it because although things may appear dead in a cold season, there will be a change of season and the things that appear dead will come to life. That's why in the cold season, you don't cut down your trees. You don't cut down your investment because when the seasons change, you will realize that what appeared not to be working was actually working in secret. I'll come to talk a bit about it. Then there is the night season. The night season is a time of darkness when you are not noticed is a time of dreams and it's a time of quietness it's a time when no one seems to take note of you or what you're doing but it's also a time of great creativity it's a time of big dreams it's a time of your life when big things are taking place within you but nobody seems to appreciate you when you are in the night season of your life and in the cold season of your life at the same time it will seem as if the whole world is against you because sometimes the seasons don't come one at a time. You can be in the night, cold, and sea time at the same time. You can be in a combination of all of these at the same time. So you have to learn to manage the seasons of your life because when you are in a cold season and a night season, it can be the most difficult, the most depressing stage of your life. And then there is this day season. The day season is the season of light, of exposure, of recognition. It's a time when the world wakes up to you. People notice you. You are appreciated. Sometimes this exposure brings you reward. And then it also brings you enemies. Now, one of the things you have to understand is that no season of life is bad. The night season is not a bad season. And I'm going to show you very soon in the scripture. The cold season is not a bad season. It's just a season. Each one serves its purpose. You cannot have day forever. Everything will die when there is day forever. You need a night for there be to be photosynthesis properly for the plants to give out what they have received in the day. So you cannot have happiness all your life. You need, you need to be quiet sometimes. You need to be sad sometimes. You need to think. You need to reflect sometimes. You can have a happy go lucky. Neither can you also be sad all the time and depressed all the time. You need a balance of all the seasons. That's why the seasons come and go. Now, the thing about seasons 
is that the Prem and the Bishop Mike. Now, they, the pastors, may be in their seed time. But Bishop Mike may be in his harvest time. Now, when you are in your seed time, working for somebody in his harvest time, you have to recognize the harvest is not for you. Are you following me? The harvest is not yours. You have come to his field in his harvest time, and you are seeing so much happening and so much harvest, but in the season of your life, it is not harvest time, it is seed time. So in his harvest time, you must start sowing your seed. Are you following me? Because there was a time this man was sowing seed and none of you were, were there. And then he comes into harvest. And then he brings in laborers to come and harvest. But the laborers are not in their harvest season. They are in their seed time in somebody's harvest. So what they do is also to sacrifice and to labor and to work hard because one day they would also get into their harvest season. The problem is when people relate to people in different seasons, they leave their own season and try to live in another person's season. If you are in your season of darkness, I'm in my season of day, and I'm having exposure all over the world, you, can, you can't come and work with me and say, I also need exposure, give me the platform. It's not your season for the day. It's your season for the night. You have to be hidden. Although the whole ministry is in the daytime, you as an individual, you are in a night season of your life. That's why I said that identifying where you are is relational, is relative to something. And if you don't know how to manage those relationships in the seasons of your life, you will make some terrible mistakes. And that is why the, the, I've, seen, I've been in ministry for some time, and I've seen people who can work in a ministry for years, sometimes 20 years, 30 years, and achieve nothing. Because they never sowed seed. Some come in when things are working. They never sow seed. All they're looking for is reward and they're agitating and agitating and looking for reward and help me and give me this and help me and give me this and nobody loves me. Nobody's taking care of me. You know, these people, they don't love me. They don't love me. They're enjoying everything all by themselves. They forget there was a seed time for them and the seasons have changed. You have come in and you have to sow your seed. And when it's time to sow your seed, don't imagine that because you are sowing the seed in this man's field, the reward will always go to that person. Because Jesus said, if you are faithful in another man's, if you sow in another man's field, God will give you your own field. You have to understand the seasons of life. Jesus spent the first 30 years of his earthly life in obscurity, in darkness. He came into the day only for three years. You have to understand that seasons change. They may be prolonged, but they will change. And when God changes the seasons, you change your actions. You cannot go to Norway or Switzerland at this time and later in December and still wear your very, very nice flowing African attire. The season will have its, fe its effect on you. Because seasons have no appreciation of your own desires. If you say, for me, as for me, I don't like wearing winter clothes. Well, you may not like it, but the season will determine whether you survive or not. 
You can say, well, I'm an African, this is what I wear. You know, this is what I wear when I'm in Africa. But when I travel around the season, I have to pack myself underneath with all kinds of stuff because those seasons have no respect for my anointing, my calling, my ministry. Season doesn't care. You, you're a general overseer, and so what? You are called, and so what? The seasons are brutal, very brutal. And if you don't handle them well, they will damage you. Just as they do naturally, they also do spiritually. In the seasons of our life, we make mistakes because we don't judge seasons well and we make mistakes. And sometimes those mistakes can stay with us for years. I know people who are living with mistakes they made 30 years ago, still making them. Never live with a mistake you can correct. And don't think that the mistake will correct itself. If you don't know where you are and don't understand the seasons of life, you're going to move based on the pressure of life, not the seasons of life. The pressure of life can cause you to abort your destiny and can cause you to, to manifest yourself at the time you must be in darkness. You, you, you will advertise yourself at the time nobody should know you. You remember what happened to the wise men who, 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 you know, I don't know why the Bible calls them wise men because I don't see wisdom. You see a vision that God shows you the king of the Jews has been born and you know what that means. So you go to the current king and says, uh, Mr. King, where is he who has been born? king of the Jews, we have come to worship him. What kind of question is that? The king says, I'm the king. Says, they said, no, 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 not you. We, we just saw his star in the east. He's just been born a couple of years ago and we've come to worship him. Where is he? Well, we don't know. We're, we're trying to find out. We, we think he's somewhere in your vicinity. So he goes to his research department and says, find out. Where this thing's supposed to happen. So, well, it's supposed to be in Bethlehem. He says, well, you go find the king and, and just come and tell me that uh, you found him. And I'll come and worship him with you. And those wise men would have gone back. I don't know why we call them wise men. I mean, they, they, were, they were going to go back to say, King, oh, guess what? We saw, we saw the new king, and he's in Bethlehem. Uh, and so you can go and worship him. An angel says, don't dare. But watch what happens. Is Jesus the son of God? Yes. Does he have angelic protection? Yes. But the angel says to Joseph, take him out to Egypt. Not I will protect him, not I will deliver him, take him out to Egypt because if he gets exposed at this time, it's gone. There are certain exposures that will destroy you. And sometimes it's good to stay under the shadow to wait for the time of your manifestation. There are people who leave companies to go and start their own companies and everything gets destroyed because they manifested in the wrong time. They didn't manage it well. So Hagar, by the help of the angel, managed the seasons of life well. Welcome back. So the three stages and seasons of life that Pastor Mesa Otabel was talking about are one, childhood, two, adulthood, three, eldership. Childhood is the stage of learning, two, adulthood is a stage of living and the time to explore, and three, eldership is the stage to leave a legacy. Thank you for your time. In order to support our channel, please do well to subscribe to our channel,
and also share our videos also like this video and leave your comments down in the comment section down below also do well to pass through pastor mesa otabel's youtube channel to watch similar videos as well and also subscribe to his channel stay positive